Praise the Lord. Are you ready for revival? Are you ready for prayer? Are you ready for your miracle? Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Pray that the Lord will make you obedient to the word. All that we have heard this morning, all we have learned, that the grace of God will come into your life. That anything that will hinder God's flow of miracle power in your life, the Lord will cut everything off. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. Make up your mind. Take a decision. Be not hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. Tell the Lord your conversion, your salvation, your eternal life will be so real that people will know that we're a real child of God. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you because you've led us all to this point. Thank you for the great things you've done in our lives. And thank you for all the things we're still going to do. We're praying, oh Lord, our hearts, our lives, our families, everything open to you. You will do wonders in every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that whatever will hinder the flow of the power of God in our lives or hinder the flow of the supernatural in our lives, you cut it off from us in Jesus' name. Whatever, Lord, will close the door of blessing and the door of the miraculous in any life. Oh, Lord, we pray you will take everything away from every life in Jesus' name. As we look at your word once again, we pray blessings upon blessing, grace upon grace, glory upon glory, and the supernatural will be known in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And everybody said, yeah. We're coming to Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. Genesis chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. If you know anything about the names of God at all, Jehovah is the Lord. Jehovah is the God of heaven. Jehovah is the almighty one, the eternal one, is the all-powerful one. If you know anything about the names of God at all, if God reveals himself that is the Jehovah who saves. The Jehovah who provides is the Jehovah who delivers, is the Jehovah who heals, is the Jehovah who created the whole of the universe, is the eternal one, is the self existence one, is the I am that I am. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. That means God will provide. I come to tell you today that God will provide in your life. Every need of your life, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. And he said, as it is to this day, that is, Jehovah Jireh is still as faithful to this day as he was, as loving as he was, as mighty as he was, as powerful as he was. And that name that Abraham called God at that time, that name still abides and stays until this day. And then he says, in the mouth of the Lord. It shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Actually, this was Mount Moriah, where 
Abraham was told to make a sacrifice to the Lord. And he says, in that mount of the Lord, Mount Moriah, that is the place where it will be seen that Jehovah is the provider. But you know something? Mount Moriah eventually became Mount Calvary. That is where Christ sacrificed himself for you and for me. And because of that sacrifice, we know that Jehovah Jireh is still to be seen from the mount, from Mount Calvary. And from the mount of the Lord, the Lord still provides today. And I pray that the provision of the Lord in your life will not be lacking, will not be limited in Jesus' name. And Abraham calls the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this very day, in the Mount of the Lord, Mount Moriah, in the Mount of the Lord, Mount Calvary, in the Mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. I'm going to read from verse 1. As you look at verse 1, you will see what God himself did with Abraham. I'm talking to you today on the believers abiding faith in Jehovah Jireh. The believers abide in faith in Jehovah Jireh. In chapter 22 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham, tempt Abraham, try Abraham. The word tempt there is to try, is to test, is to evaluate, is to examine. The Lord wanted to know the depth of Abraham's faith, the height of Abraham's faith. The strength of Abraham's faith, the validity of Abraham's, the solidity of Abraham's faith. You see, a faith which cannot be tested, cannot be trusted. But a faith that is tested, is a faith that is trusted, is a faith that is triumphant. When the Lord tests your faith, examines your faith, evaluates your faith, and when the Lord himself tries that faith to see how solid, how stable, how steadfast, how unwavering, how unchanging, how devoted to the Lord. The Lord tested the faith of Abraham. He tested faith, he trusted faith, a triumphant faith, and it says, And said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I, answering the Lord immediately, answering the Lord promptly, answering the Lord without question, answering the Lord without reservation. Abraham did not even know what God was going to say. Abraham, behold, here am I, here I am. And when you are responding to the Lord like that, every message you hear, responding to the Lord, a message of consecration, a message of separation, a message of sanctification, a message of a testing of your faith. And you are responding to the Lord immediately. Tested faith, trusted faith, triumphant baby, but still. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a bunch of rain upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. The Lord here was testing the faith of Abraham. Did he love, did he love the gift more than the giver? The Lord wanted to know. Did he love his son more than God himself? God wanted to know, was his mind now on the gift, on the son, on the provision, on what he had, what he got from God. That's why God tested his faith. And God will test our faith. He will test our love. He will test our devotion. He will test our consecration. Because it is when we pass that test, we move on to the next level of the glorious provision of the Lord in our lives. Jehovah Jireh will never reveal the fullness of his provision until your faith is tested and tried and trusted and triumphant. It is the testing of the faith. It is the triumph of that faith that makes God to say to you, in all your life, in all areas of your life, I will be Jehovah Jireh. Look at verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. He didn't delay because this is tough. This is the, what kind of test is this? But he responded immediately. He rose up early in the morning 
and he saddled his ass, and he took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He didn't forget Isaac back at home. You know, there are people, they'll say they forgot what the Lord wanted them to offer unto the Lord. He didn't leave that back at home. Neither did he discuss with Sarah. Sarah, I'm hearing a voice. The Lord is telling me something. He's saying, this is our son, our only son, whom we love. We should sacrifice him unto the Lord. Now what will Sarah have said, I don't know. But in the case of Abraham, he said, the word has come to me. The voice has spoken to me. The commandment has got to me. And because it is me God is speaking to, I'm responding immediately. And we're told, and he cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the latch will go yonder and worship and come again to you. You see the faith? It was a faith that was solid, a faith that was steadfast, a faith that was stable. He said, I'm not losing the son. If I give my son to the Lord, he'll give the son back to me. I am this large. I am this, my beloved son. I am this Isaac will go yonder and will worship. When you sacrifice, you worship. Some people think that if they just sing with their mouth and their heart is not there, they're worshiping. Some people think if they teach the word of God in the house fellowship, they teach in the district, they teach anywhere with their mouth, their heart is not there. They think they're worshiping. It is when you sacrifice and you give the most important in your life, you are able to offer it to the Lord. That's worship. I and this lad will go yonder and we will worship. He said, you will not go with us. This is sacred. This is personal. This is deep. And this is spiritual. I and the Lord will go there and do it and worship. And then we'll come back in verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, here am I, my son. He didn't show any kind of emotion or sorrow or self-pity or regret. I'm following the Lord. And look at what he requires. I'm following the Lord. Look at what he demands. A tested faith. It's a trusted faith. It's a triumphant faith. When your faith is solid, when your faith is stable, when your faith is steadfast, you will not be mourning and groaning and complaining and saying, this is what the Lord requires. He wants us to be holy, holiness, holiness, holiness every time. This is what the Lord requires. He requires consecration and devotion and sacrificing everything to Him. As if you are complaining that God is demanding too much of you. He created you. He gave you life. He gave you the soul, he gave you the spirit, he gave you the property, he gave you everything. But in the case of Abraham, when the son said, here, he said, look at this and behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamp for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide. God will provide. Can you say that with me? God will provide. Can you say that again? God will provide. You know, there are people that can, you know, uh, they, they say that they believe the promises of God. As long as there's no demand on their life, no demand on their character, no demand on their property. They say, I believe God, I believe God. Give me, give me, give me. As long as God is giving them this and giving them this and giving them this, I thank God, I praise God, I glorify God, I exalt God. God is doing this and that. But when God begins to demand something in their lives and he says, this is special to you, give it to me. 
This is uh, very important to you, indispensable in your life. Give it to me. Then they cannot praise and worship the Lord anymore. They cannot quote the promise of God anymore. My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering. So they went both of them together. And remember that prophecy of Abraham, God will provide. God will provide. Every day you wake up, God will provide. Every week you are, you know, living your life and walking, God will provide. Any challenge you have in your family, what do you say? Tell me out loud. God will provide. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar of wood. And Abraham stretched forth his son and took the knife to slay his son. It was for real. He wanted to do exactly what God had said. He said, God gave this son to me. And God is requesting that I bring the son back to him. I know he will raise him up. There's no problem with God. He brought this son out of the dead womb of Sarah, out of the dead body of Abraham. And the dead body of Abraham, the dead womb of uh, Sarah, brought, uh, brought a living son. And so, if the child, husband dead in the body, and the wife dead in the womb, and then if the son now is dead, the power of resurrection will bring the child back to me. He tested faith, it's a trusted faith. A trusted faith is a triumphant faith. To see that the faith is solid. To see that the faith is stable. To see that the faith is steadfast. That's what the Lord was doing here. He actually stretched out the knife. He wanted to offer the son unto God. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I, always available, always answering the Lord. I pray you will always be answering the Lord in Jesus' name. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the Lord, neither do anything, do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Now I know. I was testing you. Now I know you can be trusted. I was testing you. Now I know that your faith is triumphant. Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the ticket by his son. And Abraham went and took the ram. Did God provide? I said, did God provide? Yes. My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the offering. And I want to tell you this year, if you will follow God implicitly, if you will follow God wholeheartedly, if you will follow God unreservedly, if you will follow God promptly, without any delay and without questioning, God will provide in your life. At a time when you don't know where the provision is coming from, it will provide your life in Jesus' name. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him, Abraham caught in a ticket by his sons. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. It was after that he now said, you see, Jehovah Jireh follows sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh is the consequence, it's the conclusion of consecration. Jehovah Jireh is the response of the Lord to you, bringing everything, your life, your spirit, your soul, everything you have unto him. That's now after, after that we have in verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it, is, as it is to this day, in the mouth of the Lord, it shall be found. I want to talk to you on the believers abiding faith in Jehovah Jireh. There are three things we are going to talk about. Number one, the supreme test of an abiding faith. The supreme test of an abiding faith. You see, the faith of Abraham was an abiding faith, an unwavering faith. A stable faith, 
a place that was there all the time. And there's a supreme test for that. The supreme test of an abiding faith. Number two, the sublime trust in approved faithfulness. Approved faithfulness. Can you see Abraham? Faithful Abraham. He was an approved man. He was a man that God could say, this is a man that is willing to give everything is God unto me. And you have this sublime trust that he had because of his faithfulness, the sublime trust in approved faithfulness. Number three, the sevenfold treasure. The sevenfold treasure in abundant fruitfulness. You'll find out as you look at this chapter. The treasure, the provision, the goodness of the Lord, and the things earthly and heavenly, the things temporal and eternal that God now gave him as a result of this. In fact, God said, because, because, because you have obeyed me. Look at verse 18. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. In thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. It is for that reason that his faith was tested. And the faith could be trusted. And the faith was not to be triumphant. That's why God now gave him the sevenfold treasure in abundant fruitfulness. I come to number one. The supreme test of abiding faith. Come back to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things. After which things? Abraham had another son. And that other son was not the son of promise. And the Lord told Abraham, you can send away that son. And Abraham obeyed. And the only son remaining abiding at home now was Isaac. He woke up in the morning and he saw him. He woke up in the morning and he spoke to him. He woke up in the morning and he loved him. And this son was at the very center of his heart. He loved him. He appreciated him. He was looking up to him. He was saying, this is the one that will, con that will continue my uh, kind of uh, my life and will continue and extend my posterity. And then the Lord did test, did try, did examine, did evaluate Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. I am ready. I am available. What says thou? What do you say? A person that is not afraid of giving himself fully to God, consecrating himself fully to God, consecrating everything he has unto God, because he knows if I give anything to God, there will be multiplication, multiplication in my life. What I give unto God is going to multiply and return back to me. I pray that that faith will be seen in every one of us in Jesus' name. Are you there? Give me a good amen. amen. Verse 2. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, this is the only one remaining, whom thou lovest. Think about that. Take now, now. It is at this time I want you. I don't want you delaying. I don't want you thinking about it. I don't want you thinking through. This time, this is what I request. What's he asking from you? Actually, he wasn't asking for Abraham's son in a way. He was asking for Abraham's heart. Where is your heart? Where is your love? Where is your devotion? Where is your desire? Where do you put everything that you've got? Where is, where is your interest? And what is it that actually makes you very happy in life? Is it God or your son? Is it God or that certificate? Is it God or that position? Is he God of that appointment? Is he God of that privilege? Is he God of that whatever it is? That's what God wanted to know. Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him 
there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. It was a supreme test of his abiding faith. And then let's see why he was able to do that. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading here from verse verse 17. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. Yeah, what's the eyes seek in your life? That you are looking at every day. The eyes seek in your life. You know, sometimes there are people, they won't even allow their children to go and serve the Lord. They say, no, I know how much it took me, how much time I waited before I got you. They wouldn't expose their children to deep commitment unto the Lord. I don't want to, you know, lose my son into consecration, into sanctification, into holiness, into whatever. I just want to keep my son and I want him to do this and do this and do this and get to that level. That's my goal. That's my dream. But Abraham, he was able to offer the son unto the Lord. When the Lord requested for the son, for you it may not be a son, it may be a daughter. For you it may not be a son or a daughter, it may be your wife. That the Lord is saying, let your wife be totally committed unto me. Let, he, let her live to please me, not to please you. Let her live or dress to please me, not to please you. Let her work to please me, not to please you. And there are people that will hold on their arguing with God. I don't want my wife to be like that. I don't want my wife to be committed like that. I don't want my wife to be so sanctified like that, that the world will not appreciate, you know, the, the, the talent of my wife. Sometimes it's your husband that the Lord is saying, do you love me to the point you can release your husband unto me, that he will love me he will serve me, he will work for me anyhow, anywhere I request or I demand a service. And in the case of Abraham, it was a son. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. The Lord is showing us that if a man like Abraham could face a supreme test of faith that he could give the only son, the son whom he loves. You know, there are some people that feel that, well, if we're going to give up anything at all, it is not what we love. They're like Saul. He went to Amalek and he destroyed all those things that were vile, all the things that were worthless. And then the things that appeared very good, he preserved everything. You know what, if you really want to serve God, God is demanding that thing that you love. It may be like, you know, you may be a man, or you know, you love all the chain and all the jewelry. And the Lord is saying, I know you love that. I know that is almost the very center of your life. I know that you want to spend all your money, all your resources on gold and trickless and all that. But can you sacrifice that to me? Sometimes a woman that, you know, it comes to a church like this. I love the church. I love the preaching. I love the music. I love the prayer. I love the miracles. Only one thing. They, 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 they are telling me that the word of God says that all my jewelry, all my gold, all my silver, all this is all the attachment of the head, all the one I hang on the neck. They're saying that the Lord is saying, give that to me. But I love them so much, I love them more than God. And because of that, they cannot stay. Other people are saying it is because of the association I belong to. I belong to their society. And that society is very part of my life. In fact, when I die, they are going to fulfill a particular role. And because of that society they love so much, that's why they cannot give up all that and serve the Lord. In the case of Abraham, it was a son. The supreme test of faith that God said, This son, give the son unto me. The word of the Lord will come to you. The demand of the Lord will come upon you. In the case of Abraham, you see, that's what brings Jehovah Jireh into our lives. God will provide. You know, some people just say glibly and carelessly, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. It is for the people whose faith has been, has been tested. And their faith can be trusted. And their faith is triumphant. In verse 17, by faith, 
Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that he is these were the one that will prolong his family from generation to generation. And in Isaac, thy seed shall be called. And God said, that seed that will produce all the others in generations to come, offer that son unto me. What are you holding back today? That thing you are holding back from God. And you are saying, can I give up this one? Can I give up this one? Can I give up this one? That is what will hinder God being Jehovah Jireh in your life. Look at verse 19. Accounting that God, this Jehovah Jireh, accounting that God is El Shaddai, accounting that God is the Almighty, according that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. And that's what the Lord is saying today, that even though it tries our faith, even though he examines our faith, and we can move on to the point that tested faith can become the trusted faith number two. Point number two now, the sublime trust in approved faithfulness. The sublime trust in approved faithfulness. There are some people that say, well, I'm faithful to God. How are you faithful to God? What have you given to God? Have you given your heart to the Lord? Are you faithful to God? Have you given your body to the Lord? Are you faithful to God? Are you, have you given your family unto the Lord? How are you faithful to God? What he requires of you, that you'll be devoted unto him, consecrated unto him, you'll be totally uh, sanctified and holy unto the Lord. You will not live for yourself. You will not live for the world. You will live for God and for God alone. Have you done that? Faithfulness demands that what he calls us into without cutting corners, without trying to play game with God, exactly nothing that God requests of us, we give unto God. Come to this, the sublime trust in approved faithfulness. Genesis chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, he didn't delay, and he saddled the ass, and he took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he cleared the wood for a for bunch offering, and rose up and went, and went unto the place of the which God had told him. I, I, does God tell you anything at all? The place where to worship. Does God tell you anything at all? Or is that that's my personal decision? That's what I want to do. Where they do this and they do this and they do that, that's where I will worship. God himself told Abraham where to worship. The place where he will go. And that worship will be a worship of sacrifice, a worship of consecration, a worship of commitment. It wasn't going to be a worship of dancing. It wasn't going to be a worship that is a pleasant to the flesh. This is a worship that purges the heart, a worship that purges the soul, a worship that purges the mind. You know, there are some people that I don't know whether I like the style of worship or not. I don't know whether the music appeals to me or not. I don't know whether the prayer appeals to me or not. It's, what, it's not what appeals to you. That God himself directed him. And he said, this is the worship I require. And this is the place where you'll offer that worship. And we're told on the third day in verse 4, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. Abide ye here when they are supposed to be doing here. He saying, This one you will not understand. And this one, this one is so sacred. And this one is between me and the Almighty God. This one is my devotion. This is not for public conversation. This is not for public communication. This is not for public appreciation. And this is not for public confusion. It is not something you'll tell me, Abraham, what are you doing? I heard from God. I'm walking with God. You get to the point in your life that you say, I lay that on the altar. My Isaac, I lay on the altar. 
your friends may not understand, your servants may not understand, and the people around you may not understand. You come to the place in this new year where you say, by the grace of God, I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to totally, completely, wholeheartedly, or reservedly, I'm going to serve God, and whatever God demands from my life, I'm going to give unto God. And a lot of, uh, you know, people, carnal people, natural people, simple people, society people, relatives, a lot of people around you, they will not understand. And you are not going to allow them to pry into and peep into and be, you, you, you know, be, be finding out what are you doing, what are you not doing. You, you say that my time for the Lord, my money for the Lord, my body for the Lord, and my, my whole existence all for the Lord. And and those that will not understand, let them stay over here. I'm going to the mountain top to worship the Lord. He said, Abide ye here with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the white bows of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father. Now, Isaac had been watching Abraham the father sacrifice before. This is not the first thing he was sacrificed to the Lord. He has sacrificed a ram before, he has sacrificed a sheep before, he has sacrificed a lamb before. And Isaac knew that. And Isaac now was going to ask a question. I, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. And then he said, behold the fire, and behold the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? You see, when you are in the path of faith, when you are walking in the path of faith, a tested faith, a trusted faith, a triumphant faith, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. You know, some people, no consecration, they want to prophesy. And there is no devotion to the Lord, they want to prophesy. There is no sacrificial worship unto the Lord, they want to prophesy. They cannot sacrifice their sleep to worship God. They cannot sacrifice their time to worship God. They cannot sacrifice their comfort to worship God. They cannot sacrifice anything to worship God. They say, I'm waiting for the gifts of the Spirit. I want the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy will come when you are sold out totally to the Lord. It is not something where you just say, well, I'm going to, you know, have all the worldliness I want and still have prophecy. I'm going to have all the carelessness I want and seal a prophecy. I will put all the jewelry I want and seal a prophecy. All the lipstick and attachment I want, I cannot do without them. I still want prophecy. It's at the moment of sacrifice, at the moment of consecration, at the moment of total devotion to the Lord. He gives you that word of prophecy. Look at the prophecy here. And Abraham said, my son. God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering. So they went both of them together. I pray that this year the spirit of prophecy will come upon your life. That you will not miss your way as you are going, as you are walking. Devoted to every morning you wake up, say, Lord, here am I again. I lay everything on the altar. A sacrifice before. Whatever sacrifice you demand of me, I lay everything on the altar. It is that that will bring the gifts of the Spirit into your life. And we find that this uh, man, how he did it, we're looking at uh, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, and we're looking at verse 60. Psalm 119, we're reading from verse 60. What he did, he rose up early in the morning. And what the Lord wants us to do, responding to the Word of God, when we hear the preaching of the Word of God, when they, we hear the message, what God demands of us, that immediately, without any delay, without questioning, that we're able to rise up and obey the Lord immediately. Psalm 119, verse 60. I make haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. I make haste. I delayed not to keep thy commandments. And then we're, we're able to live by faith and speak by faith. And every utterance is an utterance of faith. In Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, 
Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, verse 13. This is what really helped Abraham. And this is what made Abraham the kind of person he was. This is what brought Jehovah Jireh into his life. And when we say no lack, no loss, and no limitation, this is it. It's a path of consecration. It's a path of sacrificing everything unto the Lord. That's what brings Jehovah Jireh, God will provide into our lives. And we speak by faith, and we walk by faith, and we live by faith. In Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says we, having the the same spirit of faith we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written I believed and therefore have I spoken I believed therefore have I spoken actually Abraham believed that God was going to provide he knew that God must provide he looked at the promises of God in the past he looked at the promise of Isaac as a seed and he said God will have to provide and out of that came a prophetic utterance God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt sacrifice and it says over here I believe therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. We're coming back to Genesis chapter 22, point number three. Point number three, the sevenfold treasure in abundant fruitfulness. The sevenfold treasure in abundant fruitfulness. I want you to see here the sevenfold treasure that God now promised Abraham because of what he did. And I pray that this year there will be treasure in your life. I said there will be treasure in your life. That every area of your life, provision that you can treasure, provision that you'll never forget, provision you never dreamt of, you never thought of, will come in your life in Jesus' name. And let us come to this in Genesis chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 8 now. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And see what the Lord has said. And what the Lord was going to give him because of this obedience to the Lord. I'm looking at number 1. God will provide himself a lamb. God will provide himself a lamb. Look at verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. God will provide himself. God will provide himself. Everywhere you go this year, God will provide himself. If you need healing, God will provide himself as your healer. If you need deliverance, God will provide himself as a deliverer. If you need provision, God will provide himself as a provider. If you need uh, you know, riches, God will provide himself as a supplier. He will provide himself in your life in Jesus' name. If you need wisdom, God will provide himself. He is the wisdom of God now in man. And any practical thing you need, any wonderful thing you need, this year is a year of provision. I said this year is a year of provision. God will provide himself. You know what here? What Abraham needed was a lamb. And God will provide himself a lamb. If what you need is riches, he has all the riches, all the, all the bees on the mountaintop, they belong to him. God will provide himself the riches. If what you need is power, is the mighty one, is the powerful one, God will provide himself your power. If what you need is love, affection, God will provide himself, is the God of love. God is love. God will provide himself as love. That is, whatever you need this year, if you will follow this path of a tested faith, a trusted faith, a triumphant faith, God will provide himself in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two. You find that is the blessing number two. You find this in verse 14. Look at verse 14. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is to this day, that day, the following day, the following day, the following day, he woke up in the morning, he said, because of what I saw on the mount, the mount of Moriah, Jehovah Jireh. He knew that there will be no lack in his life anymore because he's Jehovah Jireh. You will discover this year, there will be Jehovah Jireh in your life in Jesus' name. In your office, it will be Jehovah Jireh. 
in your family, there will be Jehovah Jireh. In the dead of the night, when it appears you don't have any helper, there will be Jehovah Jireh in Jesus' name on the journey. While you are going on the road and something is needed, whatever it is that is needed, Jehovah Jireh will always be there. I said Jehovah Jireh will always be there. And when your body suffers pain and then you say, what will I do? Jehovah Jireh will provide healing in Jesus' name. When there is famine, Jehovah Jireh will provide food. You will not perish in the famine in Jesus' name. Number two is Jehovah Jireh as it is until this day in the mouth of the Lord. Number three now, I will bless thee. Look at verse 17. Verse 17, that in blessing I will bless thee. This year for you is a year of blessing. I said it's a year of blessing. And God said, I will. God said, I will. God said, I will. I want you to put your finger there. I'm coming back there to Genesis chapter 22. But I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. This year is the year of God's I will in your life. I will in your family. I will in your place of work. We're looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk and who will let it. I will walk and who shall let it. There is no hindrance for the power of God in your life this year in Jesus' name. So then, number three, I will bless. Number four, I will multiply. I will multiply. Look at Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. It says that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. I will multiply. I will multiply. This year, multiplication in Jesus' name. Have you noticed, have you noticed, as the stars of heaven, that is spiritual, as the stars of heaven, that is saintly, as the stars of heaven, that is above the earth here, is saying that he's going to give you spiritual blessings that will become a treasure, salvation in your family, a treasure. Members of your family that are not saved, God will save them in Jesus' name. And then sanctification, holiness in your family. The wife is holy, the husband is holy, the children are holy, the parents are holy and will become like stars in heaven and God will make stars out of members of your family. I said God will make stars out of members of your family. I will multiply thee as the stars of heaven. Now look at uh, that verse 17 again and then and as the sand that is upon the seashore. That is number five. I will multiply you as the sand that is natural children. That is, uh, you know, biological children. That is what you have. All that you have, your blessings will be uncountable. Your blessings will be uncountable because that's what God is saying here. Number six, look at number six in verse 17. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Well, that means that you'll have dominion over your enemies. The gate that leads into the control of the city of the enemy. God will make you to possess that gate in Jesus' name. This year, enemies will not overcome you. You will overcome the enemies in Jesus' name. They will not have dominion over you. You will have dominion over them in Jesus' name. Number seven, number seven, look at verse, look at uh, verse 18. And it says, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That is, the blessing will fill up in your life and will overflow from your life. It will touch other people around you that now in thy seed, that is through the blessings I'm going to give you, and then your seed and your descendant, it will flow to all the various nations. That's what has given us Jesus, because Jesus is referred to as the seed of Abraham, as the son of Abraham. And through that Jesus now, all the blessings we have all over the nations of the earth. But look at the reason here in verse, in verse 18. Because, because, because thou hast obeyed my voice. I don't want you to forget that word because. Because, look at chapter 26. The word because. 
the word because because thou hast obeyed my voice. We're looking at 26 verses 4 and 5. It says, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all, the, all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. You see how the blessings continue because of that obedience. And the Lord is calling you and challenging you that if these blessings are going to overflow in your life, it is because, it is because, it is because of obedience. Jeremiah chapter 35. In Jeremiah chapter 35, we're reading here from verse 18. Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because, you see that, because, you see that, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, the messages you are hearing, because you have obeyed. The instructions you are hearing, because you have obeyed. The challenge you are receiving, because you have obeyed. The blessing, the treasure, and the supernatural in our lives. And the manifestation of Jehovah Jireh is based on because you have obeyed. It says, because thou hast obeyed the voice and the commandment of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts and done according to all that he has commanded you. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not lack, shall not want, shall not miss a man to stand before me forever. Everlasting blessing because of that, because of that obedience. We're looking at a Second Samuel chapter 6, because, because, Second Samuel chapter 6, because of obedience. Second Samuel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 12, and it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that pertaineth unto him, because, because of the ark of God. The ark of God was in his house. He sacrificed that space. He gave everything to the Lord. And because of that obedience and because of that yieldedness, because of that, blessings came upon his life. Blessings are coming upon your life. This year is a year of blessing. This year is a year of multiplication in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Because, because when your faith is tested, you responded to the Lord and your faith was trusted and your faith became triumphant. The Lord is saying, offer yourself unto me. Give yourself unto me. And it says, give yourself unto me. And you are willing to give yourself unto the Lord. Like you requested from Abraham, give your son unto me. And Abraham will not hold back, will not delay. And he gave immediately. I said, come and you give immediately. The blessings of God will not lack in your life this year in Jesus' name. We're coming now to, we're coming to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs Chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 26. My son, give me thine heart. My son, give me thine heart. My son, give me thine heart. He required from Abraham, give me your son. But now he's saying, actually, what I want is your heart. I want to know where is your heart, where is your affection. I want to know where is your deep, what do you, what do you depend on, what do you trust. I want to know what are you holding on to, what are you holding back from me. Your heart, I want your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the hands art. Out of the abundance of the heart, the feet move. Out of the abundance of the heart, the life operates. And because out of the abundance of the heart are all the issues of life, I want that center. I want that throne of your heart. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. And if you can do like Abraham and say, Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, my Savior. All to Jesus, my Redeemer. I surrender all. Jehovah Jireh will become operative in your life. I said Jehovah Jireh will become operative in your life. Are you ready? I said are you ready? 
Why don't you rise up? He says, my son, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. And then you say, without any delay, and without any reservation, and without any wavering, and without consultation with anybody, the Lord is saying, give me your heart. And then you give your heart to the Lord. That soul, Jehovah Jireh, will become active, will become active in your life. Open your mouth and offer to the Lord what he requests from you, what he demands from you. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, I have heard. Lord, I have heard. I have heard that this must be a tested faith. What is so important to you? What is so sacred to you? What is so special to you that you cannot offer unto the Lord? Give me your heart. It will not be difficult then to give him the jewelry. It will not be difficult to give him the dressing. It will not be difficult to give him every area of your life. It will not be difficult to surrender, surrender, surrender to the Lord every area of your life. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. This is what will make Jehovah Jireh the provider. Jehovah Jireh the supplier. Jehovah Jireh the healer. Jehovah Jireh the deliverer. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh the supplier. This one, what will make him active in your life? Active in your life. Everybody should be offering something to the Lord now. Your heart to the Lord, your soul to the Lord, your body to the Lord, your time to the Lord, your treasure unto the Lord right now. It is they that will multiply, multiply the sevenfold treasure in your life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Yes, Lord, I surrender all. Yes, Lord, I surrender all. Yes, Lord, I surrender all. My heart, my will, my work, my ways, my life, my time, my ability, my skill, everything of God, I surrender, I surrender. I lay everything at the feet of Calvary, at the feet of the cross. I lay everything on Mount Calvary, Mount Moriah. I lay everything before the Lord. I surrender all. That's what activates Jehovah Jireh in your life. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Uh, you not speak your words anymore. Not my will, but your will. Not my way, but your way. Not my, not my speech, but your speech. Not what I like, but what you like. What you want, what you deserve. I give everything unto you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. It means every day, it means every week, it means every month, it means every moment of your life. I'm sold unto the Lord. I'm giving unto the Lord. I'm consecrated unto the Lord. I'm devoted unto the Lord. Have you given your wife to the Lord? Have you given your husband to the Lord? Have you given your son to the Lord? Have you given your daughter unto the Lord? Have you given your knowledge unto the Lord? Have you given everything you've got unto the Lord? I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Come now, surrender before the Lord. What are you holding on to? What are you holding back? What are you keeping back? Why don't you say, Lord, I come like Abraham, so that Jehovah Jireh can be activated in my life. Jehovah Jireh, the provider, activated in my life. The faith that takes hold of the promise of God and the faith that lets go of everything God demands in my life. Oh Lord, I surrender. Oh Lord, I surrender. Oh Lord, I surrender. That's what God is waiting for in your life. Then you'll be a special son of God, a special child of God, a special daughter of God. Anything that is not according to the will of God, I surrender. I, know, I like that dressing so much. I like that jewelry so much. I like that cosmetic so much. I like that attachment so much. I like that company so much. I like that uh, society so much. I like that gang so much. I like that place so much. I like that whatever, that game so much. I so those things you like. Those things you appreciate. Those things you love. Those are the things it's requesting for. It's not requesting for useless things, worthless things. It's not requesting for what you don't really appreciate. It is that thing you love. It is that thing your mind is set on. That is what the Lord is requesting for. And he's saying, if you can surrender that in your life, you will activate the power, the might, and the strength of Jehovah Jireh in your life. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I give everything unto you. And release the might of God. Release the provision of God in your life. Make it a year of blessing. Make it a year of multiplication. Make it a year of the sevenfold treasure in our lives. 
it's going to happen. Once we surrender, once we give up everything, once we give everything unto the Lord, the Lord will make this year a year of provision, a year of power, a year of protection, a year of preservation, a year of miracle, a year of signs and wonders because we surrender all unto him. He gives us back everything we will ever need in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you of the seed of Abraham? I said in Jesus' name we pray. Will you willingly, wholeheartedly, unreservedly follow the steps of the faith of Abraham? Answer me. In Jesus' name we pray. Jehovah Jireh will live in your house. Jehovah Jireh will walk with you in the way. Jehovah Jireh will provide for all your needs. Any dead sin in your life, Jehovah Jireh will bring life in Jesus' name. Everything you have lost in the past, if you walk in the footsteps of the faith of Abraham, the Jehovah Jireh will activate everything in your life in Jesus' name. You yourself, you will be a miracle. You will be the son of a miracle. You will be the carrier of a miracle. The power of the miracle working activity of God will be operating every time in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the example of Abraham. We thank you because he had a tested faith, he had a trusted faith, he had a triumphant faith. I pray for your people this morning, Lord, like Abraham laid his Isaac on the altar for you. Everything we have, precious to us, important to us, oh Lord, we lay everything on the altar in Jesus' name. Abraham's faith was solid, our faith will be solid. Abraham's faith was steadfast, our faith will be steadfast. Abraham's faith was stable, our faith will be stable. We come with that unwavering faith this morning. And Lord, I pray as we surrender, we give our hearts unto you. We give our lives unto you. Everything we need from now until we see you face to face, supply in Jesus' name. Be the Jehovah Jireh in every life, the healer in every life. The deliverer in every life, the provider in every life, the miracle worker in every life. And I pray that to surround your people with a wall of fire, that Lord, no evil will penetrate any life again in Jesus' name. Waking up in the morning, it will be with Jehovah Jireh. Walking in the day, it will be with Jehovah Jireh. Sleeping at night, it will be with Jehovah Jireh. Awake or sleep anytime, anywhere, oh Lord, whether in the city or in the village, on the road, in the church, anywhere, Jehovah Jireh will be walking every time in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. From this moment on, our partnership with, the, with Jehovah Jireh will never stop in Jesus' name. Let your blessings multiply, multiply, multiply in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know it is now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said.